G'day race fans, in this video I am fitting a sump baffle to the FA20 engine fitted to my BRZ. Details next. I'm Mark Louth from Black Dog Motorsport and if you or somebody you know has the black dog chasing them there are some links in the description which you may find useful. When I was planning this job, it didn't appear as if it was going to be much of a big deal on first glance, but boy, was that wrong. But before I get into all of that, let's have a quick look at the kit and see what we've got. The kit is from Morosso and consists of the baffle and two ceiling washers. The baffle is a two-tiered design that when fitted creates a multi-layered baffle system with the bottom of the OEM sump forming the third and final layer. Now this series of images is my poor attempt at illustrating this setup and while it's not the greatest, it should hopefully give you a bit of an idea of the installed products. What you are looking at here is the replacement sealing washer beside the removed OEM seal and you can clearly see the difference in the thickness. Now this increase in thickness is to allow for the thickness of the top tier of the baffle when it is installed between the block and the sump. The circled areas in this image show where the washers sit when they are installed into the sump and in these other images we can see the corresponding ceiling area in the lower block. Righto, let's pull this thing apart. First off, disconnect the battery. Second, disconnect the two oxygen sensors and the two bolts that hold the brackets to the engine. Using safe practices, jack the car, put it on jack stands and drain the oil. Once that's done, remove the exhaust headers, paying particular attention to the cables on the O2 sensors. My headers came off pretty easily, except for one nut which was really hard to get to. Also be aware, my headers are aftermarket and may be different to yours. When the headers are out of the way, just undo the sump bolts. And lastly, gently tap the side of the sump with a soft hammer to break the seal. Okay, maybe not that soft, maybe a little harder. At around this point, it was becoming increasingly obvious that for whatever reason, Subaru had decided to effectively chemically weld the sump to the block and it was not going to come off easily. In the end, I had to use a rather large lever which did some serious damage to the uh, sump, but nothing I can't fix, but something that you should be aware of. Now, before anybody jumps into the comments and has a meltdown about my stupidity in destroying the sump, please be advised that I may or may not have exceeded the limits of my medication at this point and you may be more successful than I. This is just a bit of a heads up to let you know that it may not be quite as straightforward as you were thinking. Okay then, well that'll about do for part one. Uh, in part two we'll fix this bit of damage here and um, get a plan as to how we're going to reseal it and put it all back together. So as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.